Welcome back to DD with Maxi featuring Katindi CV. Uh, if you're catching us now, you might want to go back and start from the very beginning. It's been a, a nice, lovely engagement of the childhood journey that has brought Katindi to where she is now um, at USIU. And this time around, you're being hosted at uh, Uluwazi restaurant at Ki Kirawa. Uh, Kirawa Road, which is in Kitusuru. Lovely people. They just gave us a lovely tea. You'll see here what we were having for breakfast. And we've just had our tea. So now uh, you are saying two, two things happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So before graduating, mm -hmm. you have two things. Uh, right. Internship and yes. uh, community, community service. service. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, just before I finished, so mm -hmm. I said I did graduate within two and a half years. Yes. The Record other thing I should speed. qualify yes. is that it, at that time, yeah. you could actually do the work if you had a course or two left mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then come back, finish, mm -hmm. particularly if you just have those two mm -hmm. and then get the paper, mm -hmm. get the official paper. So I had mm -hmm. about two of them mm -hmm. um, left. Mm -hmm. And so the first one was community service. Mm -hmm. And community service is basically about giving back to society. Right. And so I went to a children's home. Yeah. Um, owned by the Anglican Church. Yeah. In Karen. Yeah. And I was to be a primary, a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. Uh, and so I I went and um, so it was a a social capital connection, if you may. Right. An auntie of mine had relations there, and so yeah. she asked if I could, you know, do my community service. Yeah. And so I was taken round in this children's home. Yeah. And of course, about this lovely young children. Yes. I'd never taught anyone before. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, the, the kids were told to continue their orientation. Mm. And so I, I walk around with these kids. I don't notice there's a kid behind me mm -hmm. who keeps following us. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's mixed race, mm. keeps following us. And how I get to know that she's there is that she sleeps her hand in mine. Mm. And she's very shy, so she doesn't look at me. So I look at her and I just say, you know, when we somehow she'll get comfortable and we will, mm. you know, eventually chat. Yeah. So we got to sit down and I got to hear the stories of the kids. Mm -hmm. And it happens that in this children's home, mm. they are not orphans mm. as such. They mm -hmm. could be, but they have relatives mm. or they have they come from very poor background so mm. they're brought to the home mm. and after the school term is over they right. go back to right. their relatives but this one child didn't yeah. have any relations yes and so she would stay on with the teachers mm. and so because it was the holidays mm -hmm. she was going to be hosted or about the holidays she was going to be hosted by mm. one of her teachers yes and we sit and we talk and she becomes one of the most animated children mm. and i play with them and i'm so drawn to her I ask if I I could, you know, go with her for the holidays, obviously. Oh wow. Um I don't I don't remember whether they accepted that first time. Mm -hmm. But eventually, because I purposed then after the community service that, that I would do it, yes. Mm. She became I fo I actually became like a foster mm. sister to mm -hmm. her. And I fostered her into our home mm. every holiday. Your parents agreed? My parents agreed, mm. but the conditions mm. Well, my dad was very drawn to her mm. and I think he he had he never minded adopting her. Mm. Um, my mom was uh, clear mm. that because I took on the responsibility, mm. I need to follow through. Mm. And so I would use my pocket money mm. to just do everything mm. for mm. her. Her name was Sarah. Mm. Mm. And so we had, I, I, I told you I didn't grow up with any sisters. Mm. So she was like the little sister I never had. Mm. And so she'd sleep on my bed, would mm. have the morning fights of who, whose mm. turn is it to make the bed. Mm. But it was one of the most fulfilling things, oh dear. you know, mm. yeah, to, to ever, you know, do in mm. my life. Mm. Because Sarah then had a home to mm. come to for mm. the next four years. Mm. Um, so from when she was four, mm. I think, to when she was seven. Mm. So three years. Mm. Yeah. Or mm. thereabout. Mm. And yeah, every holiday we mm. would just hang out. She mm. would, we would go to family functions mm. together. Mm. And so we became very good friends. Mm. And she was part my daughter, part my sister. Mm. Mm. And so that's how 
you know, my community service ended. And I think for any university, oh my goodness, I think that considers that that is that should be an integral part of any course. So it's very, very amazing it's what like a changing. community service program just yes. for two months, three months. Yeah, and, does... and you know, I, I don't think anyone has done an audit yeah. of how impactful it that is, is. Yeah. because it gives you a side to society that you're oblivious to when exactly. you're in school. Yeah. And so, for example, I, first of all, you don't even realize how hard it is to teach children. Yes. And heads up to all those people who yeah. teach younger kids because mm -hmm. it's it's quite an art. Yeah. But apart from that, so Sarah is became one of those life bonds in in one way or another. I mean, we are, we are not actively in touch, but you see, so this this girl eventually got adopted mm -hmm. uh, into a family, a very affluent family, if you may. Mm. And you see, so she's coming from not having any uh, family relations at all. Mm. And and I realize now that I was that bridge mm. that may have been very helpful mm -hmm. for her to be able to settle in in her you know new family. Mm. Because um, I eventually met her mom. Mm. And uh, one of the things she pointed out was, you know, when Sarah went into her home, I mean, she would be asked to just leave the bed because there are people to do that. And she would totally refuse and say, no, Katindi told me never to leave bed without, uh, I mean, never to wake up and not make my bed or never to go to bed without brushing my teeth. Mm. And so, I, I mean, such things make you realize that you can have, I was a student. I really, my pocket money was like 200 bob. Mm. But even out of that mm. little, being able to to share that with this child, I mean, yeah. we would go to places and buy mutumba clothes mm. you know and share mm. what i had with mm. her mm. and i think that that was so impactful for mm. me mm. and and um yeah for her to be able to see my grandmother mm. visit my family members mm. and so sarah eventually moved on and lived mm. in the uk mm. and mm. then um she now has her masters mm. when i last met her she was uh, working and mm. she she really loves being in kenya mm. and but I mean, it, it is one of those things that you say, I'm glad I got the opportunity yeah, to yeah. do something like that. Yeah, with to just someone. be in her life. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm, mm. And so that's that's a part of my life that I'm very grateful mm, to mm, a campus like mm, USIU for mm, providing. Mm.